Hello! On today's episode of Collectibles from My Closet, we are focusing on Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee. Specifically the crow for Brandon Lee. And there are tons and tons of Bruce Lee collectibles and things out there. These are just a few from my closet, from around my house. Just wanted to show a few of my favorites. Some you may have seen, may not have seen. But uh, we're going to start with this guy right here, this 18-inch figure. I love this figure, and the first thing you'll notice is, well, how dusty it is. But after that, um, you'll just see that it has tons of points of articulation. So you can pose them in all kinds of different poses. The, the face is great. Um, it, uh, it comes with two different outfits. This is the traditional outfit, but uh, it also comes with the yellow jumpsuit from Game of Death. If you want to change them in that, but I prefer the traditional look and, um, and kind of a traditional karate pose. So this is how I display him. Now there are a lot of other figures that were released for Bruce Lee, but here are a few of the favorites that I have. This is the only one that I still have in the package, so you can sort of see how the packaging looks. But uh, this is the Hong Kong Dragon, where it was uh, Bruce in the 70s glory with those big glasses and the lace-up shirt and all that. But you can see that it comes with a cool little base and stuff back there to stick them on. Um, some, a, a few little uh, weapons and, and things like that. Uh, also, there's a little gold coin. It's just plastic, but um, it's neat. Here are some that are out of the package, and you can see they're in action there, swinging their weapons. This is kind of the uh, traditional Bruce in his gi and um, <clears throat> his, uh, his weapons there. And then over here, we've got the Game of Death Bruce, and look at that face. Look at that face. I love that. So angry. <laughs> I love that face. But um, these, uh, these come, like I say, uh, on the Dragon Lives bases. There's a... Uh, you know, just the regular Bruce Lee base there. And um, here's a couple more. And um, the uh, the one over here on the left, he sort of cracks me up because, well, look look at that face. Look at the lips. It looks like he's just about to say, fuck. Um, yeah, you can, you can see it. He's a fuck. There he is. But uh, then the other one over here on the right, I love this one. This is one of my favorites. It is... Um, so cool, look at that, that sculpt and um, the, the arms and the, the chest and the, everything is just really cool about that one to me. Now, on the opposite side of the spectrum, here's these little big heads. And here's Bruce there in action. And Bruce here with his bow staff. And just badass Bruce, there we go. And not to get left out, as usual, Funko comes out with a pop. And there are other Bruce Lee pops, but this particular one is um, a bait exclusive. And I don't really know what that means. Maybe, like, really serious toy collectors can, can tell me what a bait exclusive is. But I saw it and loved it and had to have it because he's just too cute. Now this is something that came out in very limited release and was kind of hard to get. You can't find them too much anymore. I think there was even maybe a lawsuit over them. I'm not sure, but here you go. This was a limited edition framed photo of Bruce that uh, was released. And this photo right here it was actually taken by John Saxon, the actor, uh, while they were on the set of Enter the Dragon. It's got one of Bruce's sayings there, his little Jeet Kune Do symbol. Also this silver coin that is in there, in the frame also. And uh, they, they only came out with a limited number of these. And like I say, I don't know if there was, there was a problem, if there was a lawsuit or what. John Saxon was telling me that something happened anyway. But um, this is uh, number 1,231 serial number of that and it shows where it's um, 0.999 fine silver in the coin and all that it's got the uh, conception artists and things like that that came out with it so very cool for comic collectors there's this this was a Bruce Lee comic series that came out from Malibu comics this is the first two issues from it and the in my opinion the uh, the comic book series was not very good but it had some interesting art, and it's got Bruce Lee on the cover, or a version of Bruce Lee anyway. So, of course, I had to have him. A couple of the more unusual Bruce Lee things are here. This is a Tech Deck Dude, and you'll see here over on the left-hand side, it just says this is Bruce. 
doesn't say Bruce Lee, just Bruce. So I, I think this probably wasn't officially licensed or something like that, but we all know it's Bruce Lee. Look at that. He's on a skateboard with his nunchucks, and it's Bruce. Now these I love. These are um, little mini mates, and to me, they're, I, they're Legos. To me, they're Lego Bruce Lee's. There's the 70s Bruce with the lace-up shirt and big glasses again, Hong Kong Bruce. And then over here is the Immortal Dragon, which uh, I love so much in the, the previous figure that I showed you. But these are little Lego versions of Bruce, or not Legos, but they're Legos to me, and I love them. Here's something that you don't see every day. This was actually sketched and given to me by a friend, and I love his take on Bruce. It's very stylized, very cartoony. I love the details in the sketch. Um, this was uh, done back in 2014 by The Sheikster, and um, I just, I love everything about this little cartoony sketch. And this really isn't a collectible, but if you like Bruce Lee and you don't have this, you need it. This on the surface just looks like some type of some type of book, and uh, it it is. But this is actually the Legacy Collection, and it's the Blu-ray set of all of Bruce's movies and bonus features and extras. And the packaging is great. It's got uh, you know different timelines and and uh, thing, little things about the movies and pictures about the movies. But uh, each page holds a disc or two, a couple of discs actually, and it's got tons of documentaries and, and all of his films. Just a really, really neat way to package a full Blu-ray set. And um, it's, it's really great quality. If you haven't got this and you like Bruce, get it now. And moving on to Bruce Lee's son, Brandon. He did a lot of fine work in his short amount of time, but he is probably most known for his work on The Crow a live-action version of the comic book series. And of course, tons of figures came out for The Crow, but here are a couple of my favorites. Many people are already aware of these super big plushy type figures, especially if you've been watching this series, because I have tons of characters made this way. They come in uh, limited numbers of 30,000. This is number 1,486 of the 30,000 run. And um, the faces are never that great, as you can see here, but um, it's okay. Uh, the uh, they come, you know, plushy clothing. Uh, there's a try me if you dare button. It's got sounds and stuff from the movie when you um, when you press on his stomach. So kind of neat. And the packaging always opens up on the back like this, and they usually give you a rundown of the movie or some history of the movie and the comic books or whatever the figure is based on. And then on the other side of the packaging, there's always uh, several photos and stuff from the film. So, uh, kind of neat to, to have. Now, this is a larger 12-inch McFarlane uh, action figure, and McFarlane uh, always does good work, and uh, the detailing is great. I love the face. I love all the details in the clothing. It's kind of hard to see through all the glare, but uh, he comes with a bass to stand on and his guitar and all that. And he, McFarlane came out with a smaller version of this. It's based, it's the same thing, but in the Movie Maniac line. And as usual, the Movie Maniacs come with a little stand-up base with a movie poster. And then the figure itself. And again, it's got the, the crow on the shoulder, the guitar, um, great details in the face and the clothing. It's hard to see a lot of the details since the clothing is black and the video flattens it. But... McFarlane's done some some great crow figures. And here are a few more of the um, the more unusual crow type of uh, figures. So this was a crow Eric Draven little mini bust that Nika made, the, the toy company Nika, and I guess they make busts also. And out of the box, it looks just like the picture on the box, not false advertising. Um, but it's, it's neat. It's got a lot of detail in the face. You can see a lot of the lines and stuff in the face. Um, the clothing is very detailed. Uh, the, the tombstone and the markings on the tombstone. So Nika did a really good job with this little mini bust. Uh, it looks great on a shelf. I keep it out a lot. 
Now this next one is weird. I, I have this because it's weird. Look at that pointing finger. I don't know what that pointing finger means. Um, and it looks like kind of tennis shoes. I, I don't know. But to me, th this is like, this is a Judd Nelson figure. That's what it is. It's Judd Nelson in goth, I, I guess, I, 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 or a woman. It's, it's just weird, but he can shake his head to his hit single, It Can't Rain All the Time. Um, but uh, here's another one that uh, is a clay mold of Eric, and I came across this accidentally. It was sitting on a table in a store, and it just struck me. I, I like the style of it, the look of it, um, the, the posing, but uh, apparently it's, it's hand sculpted from clay and then hand painted. And when you flip over the base, it shows that it was made by Attack of the Clay people, and apparently it is signed by the guy who sculpted and, uh, and painted it and made it. Of course, the Pops had to get in on the action. That's right, Funko is not going to miss the opportunity to make a Pop out of something. And um, this one is, is not overly spectacular, but it's neat and because it's cute and creepy at the same time. And this is one of my favorite things ever of Brandon Lee and the Crow. Back in 1994 in Atlanta, I was at an art show and I saw this painting and I wanted the painting. It was super expensive, so I did not get the painting. But the artist came out uh, not long afterwards with several prints of this and uh, they're signed right there and marked 94 and I was able to afford a print, but I love this. It captures Brandon and the Crow perfectly, I think. What a beautiful sketch. And that is all for this episode of Collectibles from My Closet. I want to thank everybody for watching and for your comments and things like that. Keep tuning in. We'll have more monsters, pop icon things, superheroes and stuff like that in future episodes. And we'll see you next time.